Hello everyone, I am Raksha Sirigere, welcoming all of you to this great platform, Triple T Academy, which is specially there for technical teaching and training. We all know that the KPTCL examinations are ahead. So I thought of making this video, which is based on the solution for questions of past year question papers of the examinations conducted by KPTCL. So now let us see the first question. The force between the two charges is 120 Newton. If the distance between the charges is doubled, the force will be. So the options are here. Here, we have to remember the Coulomb's law of force. Coulomb's law of force. What does Coulomb's law of force state? The force between the two point charges is equal to product on their magnitude and it is inversely proportional to square on the distance between them. So what they are telling? The force between the two charges is inversely proportional to the square on the distance between them. So the given, the given force is 120 Newton. So in the second case, what they are telling? The distance between them is doubled. That is 2R. Hence, I am taking the distance 2R. That will become 1 divided by 4R square. So what is R square here? 120 Newton. 120 Newton divided by 4. That is equal to 30 Newton. So the answer for this question is option B, 30 Newton. Our next question is, with the rise in the temperature, the resistance of a pure metals and the options are here. We all know that the resistance of the material will also depends upon the temperature of the material. In some materials, as the temperature increases, the resistance also increases. This is known as positive temperature coefficient. In some materials, as the temperature increases, the resistance will going to decrease. That is known as negative temperature coefficient. So what are the examples for positive temperature coefficient? It is pure metals and also alloys of different materials, different metals. And the examples for the negative temperature coefficient are insulators insulators, semiconductors. So here they have given the, they are given in case of a metals. Hence, as the temperature increases, the resistance of a pure metal will also increases. So the answer to this question is option A increases. So the third question is, if the three 10 microfarad capacitors are connected in parallel, the net capacitance is. So the options are this. In case of a parallel combination of a capacitance, the equivalent capacitance is given by C1 plus C2 plus C3. In case of a series, the equivalent capacitance is given by 1 divided by C equivalent is equal to 1 divided by C1 plus 1 divided by C2 plus 1 divided by C3. So in case of a parallel combination, the equivalent capacitance is equal to 10 plus 10 plus 10. So that is equal to 30 microfarads. So the answer is option B, 30 microfarads. So our fourth question is, if the voltmeter is connected like a ammeter in series with the load, what will happen? So these are the questions. These are the options. So voltmeter will be connected in parallel. Voltmeter will, also, will always be connected in parallel. Why? Because it has to get the whole amount of voltage across the load. It will be having a very high resistance. It will be having a very high resistance in order to minimize its effect to the circuit. So ammeter will always be connected in series with the circuit in order to have a full amount of full amount of current. It is made up of a low resistance. 
it is made up of a low resistance in order to reduce its effect on the circuit so if we connect the voltmeter in series which is having a very high resistance which is having a very high resistance almost no current will flow through the circuit so the answer for this question is option d almost no current will flow through the circuit our fifth question is if 60 joules of energy is available for every 15 kilos of charge what is the voltage so these are the options we know that voltage v is given by e divided by q so v is equal to what is energy here 60 joules divided by what is the charge magnitude of the charge it is 15 so it will become 4 volts so the right answer to this question is option a 4 volts then the sixth question is a field line and an equipotential surface r so now let us see what is the field lines field lines are emitted by the positive charge field lines are emitted by the positive charge in all directions the number of field lines emitted by the positive charge in all direction is infinity then let's see the equipotential surface what is equipotential surface it is the surface surface which is at equal distance from the positive charge so now they are asking the angle between the surface and the magnetic line so it will always be perpendicular so the answer to this question is option b always perpendicular so the seventh question is in dc generator the current to the external circuit from the armature is given through so these are the options so this is what the construction of dc generator looks like so in all the in all the generators the generated voltage will be in the form of ac so in order to convert ac to dc in order to convert ac to dc in case of a dc generators commutators are used so in this case commutators are the devices from which the current is current is taken to the external circuit so eighth question is two copper conductors have equal length the cross section area of one conductor is four times of other if the resistance of the conductor having small cross sectional area is 40 ohms find the resistance of other conductor so we know that resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and it is inversely proportional to the area of the conductor what they are telling the length of both the conductors are equal hence we'll take only the area resistance is inversely proportional to the area so in first case it is 40 ohms so in the second case a is four times of that so i am taking 4a 1 divided by a is equal to 40 divided by 4 that is equal to 10 ohm so the answer to this question is option d 10 ohm a next question is a light bulb a light bulb draws 300 milliamps when the voltage across it is 240 volts the resistance of a light bulb is so here consider a circuit which is having a bulb and a battery okay here 240 volts is applied and the bulb draws a current of 300 milliamps we know from ohms law we know that i is directly proportional to v and inversely proportional to the resistance then r is equal to v divided by i that is equal to what is the value of v it is 240 volts divided by 300 into 10 raised to minus 3 240 3 if i take this 10 raised to minus 3 it 
to the numerator, it will become 10 raised to 3. This is divided by 300. Two zeros cancels. 3 8s are 24. So that is equal to 800 ohms. So the answer to this question is option C, 800 ohms. So the 10th question is, if AC voltage is applied to the capacitive circuit, the alternative current flows in the circuit because consider a capacitor which is connected to a voltage, AC voltage source, which is connected to a AC voltage source. When the So this is what the AC voltage source is. When the voltage is increasing, the charges in case of a capacitor also increases. When the voltage is decreasing, the charges in case of a capacitor also decreases, which leads to the discharging of the capacitance. When the voltage is increased in a opposite direction, the capacitor will going to charge in the opposite direction itself and the charges inside the capacitor increases. When the negative voltage across the capacitor decreases, the charges in case of a capacitor will also decreases, hence the capacitor will going to discharge. So from this, what we can infer? The varying voltage produces charging and discharging current. If we apply the varying voltage to the capacitor, it will going to produce charging and discharging current. So the right answer is, Option A, varying voltage produces charging and discharging current. So the 11th question is, three identical resistors are first connected in parallel and then in series. The resultant resistance of first combination to second will be. So these are the three resistances connected in, connected in parallel. If the three identical resistances are connected in parallel, then the equivalent resistances is given by the value of resistance of one resistor divided by total number of resistors, that is three. So if the resistances are connected in series, then the equivalent resistances is given by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Since all the three resistors are equal, are having equal resistances, then the R equivalent will be three into R. So what they are asking? the ratio between parallel to series. So parallel it is R divided by 3 divided by series it is 3 into R. So it will become R divided by 9R. R are get, get cancels and 1 divided by 9 will be remaining. So the correct answer is option B, 1 divided by 9 times. In lap winding, the number of brushes are always. So these are the options. Consider a DC generator again. Here, brushes are placed on the commutator. Here you can see the black color brush, brushes are connected on the commutator. So the number of brushes, the number of brushes mounted on the commutator is equal to the number of paths of the commutator winding, the number of brushes of a DC motor winding. So now let us consider a lap winding and a wave winding. Lap wind, in, the, in case of a wave winding, the number of paths will always be two. In case of a wave wind, lap winding, the number of paths is always is equal to number of poles. So here they are asking about a lap winding. Hence, poles is equal to brushes. So the number of brushes are same as number of poles. So the answer to this question is option B, same as number of poles. The direction of electric field due to the positive charge is, these are the, op, these are the options. So from electrostatics, we know that electrostatics, 
the field lines will always be originate from a positive charge and it always terminates at the negative charge so the direction of magnetic field lines from a positive charge will always will always away from the charge and the direction of field lines in case of a negative charge is always towards the charge so the answer to this question is option a always from the charge 14th question is a capacitor stores 0.24 The capacitor stores 0.24 coulombs at 10 volts. The capacitance is. We know that the capacitance is given by Q divided by V. What is the Q here? 0.24 coulombs divided by what is the voltage? 10. So it will become 0 0.024 farads. So the right answer to this question is option A. 0.024 farads so the 15th question is a conductor 2 meter long o set right angle to magnetic field of flux density 1 so the flux density is v is equal to 1 tesla with the velocity of 12.2 meter per second 12.5 to 12.5 meter per second so the velocity is equal to 12.5 meter per second the induced EMF in the conductor will be. So what is the length of the conductor? Length of the conductor is 2 meter. So we have an equation that is EMF induced in the conductor is given by length into velocity into density. That is equal to 2 into 12.5 into 1. That is equal to 25 volts. So the answer to this question is option C, 25 volts. So the next question is conductivity is analogous to. So what is the conductivity is analogous to? So the options to this question is flux, resistivity, permeability and inductance. So we can compare the magnetic circuit. We can compare a magnetic circuit with the electric circuit. All the things, all the parameters in case of a magnetic circuit will be analogous to the parameters of a electrical circuit. So which are the parameters will be analogous? Flux will be analogous to the current. Reluctance will be analogous to the resistance. Permeability is analogous to the conductivity. Flux density is analogous to the current density. Magnetic field is analogous to the electric field. MMF is analogous to the EMF. Reluct reluctivity is analogous to the resistivity. So what they are asking here? Conductivity. They are asking conductivity, which is analogous to the permeability. So the answer to this question is option C, permeability. So the next question is a three phase four wire system is commonly used on. These are the options here where we can see the three phase four wire system. So let us see what is three phase four wire system. In case of a secondary, a secondary winding of a transformer, the, these are connected in star. And if the wires are taken from the ends of a winding and also from the neutral point and also from the midpoint and also from the midpoint if i take a wire and consider it as a it as a neutral wire it will become three phase three phase four wire three phase four wire system where we can see such type of wires between the we can see those between the distribution transformer and the consumers so here we can see the four wire three phase four wire system in between distribution transformer and the consumers so what this distribution is called secondary distribution 
Hence, the answer is option B, secondary distribution. So the 18th question is, which DC motor is used for the elevator? These are the options. Here you can see the construction of a elevator. Construction of the elevator. What it requires? It requires high starting high starting torque because in order to pull the lift or pull the lift upwards we need high starting torque here so in case of a shunt motor the torque varies with respect to the current in case of a series motor it is having a very high starting torque differential compound motor is having a low starting torque cumulative compound motor is having a high starting torque here the series motor and the cumulative compound motor is having a high starting torque but when it comes to a parameter of speed the speed of a cumulative compound motor is adjustable adjustable to load because of this character characteristics of cumulative compound motor cumulative compound motors will be used in the elevators so the right option is option d so the 19th question is whether circuit may be ac or dc one following is the most effective is re in reducing the magnitude of the current these are the options so whether it may be a dc circuit or a ac circuit from ohm's law we know that current is directly proportional to the voltage and it is inversely proportional to the resistance in case of a options we are having a resistance so the right answer is option a sorry the right option is option d resistance so the last question for today is which of the following primary cells has the highest voltage so these are the options in all these lithium cells is having a very high voltage because lithium is the material which is having a very high potential it is having a very high potential to push the charges to push charges into the circuit to push the charges into the circuit hence lithium lithium cells are having highest voltage so the right answer is option c so that's it for today so from our institution we are also providing the material which is in the form of book it consists of uh, all the past year question papers of examinations conducted by the kptcl this book is available on the online platform also in the flipkart and amazon you can also contact the institution for your book so we are also conducting the classes for the post of je 